Hi everyone, Ashlyn Keys a YouTube channel. So today I'm going to do a video about ear infections. So I wasn't feeling good the other day. I kind of got dizzy spells and felt a little weird and a little unsteady. And I had fluid in my ear. And that like, okay, you know how like if you take a shower and then your ear's kind of wet from the water? I thought it was just that. So I was ignoring it for like a day or two. But then it wasn't going away the wetness in my ear there was like fluid like literally like on the outside hole of my ear and um I felt like fullness in my ear and um pressure and then I also felt like um just like how it feels when you have swimmer's ears so I didn't have any pain um I just had uh fluid in my ear fullness and itchiness my ear really, really itched really bad, and which made me want to Q-tip my ear any more, even more, which was a mistake because I shouldn't have because it was pushing um, the infection further in my ear, which I didn't know I had an infection, but I was assuming something was going on because my ears just weren't feeling right. So I ha I, my left ear is fine. My right ear is not. So... A couple days ago when I was Q-tipping my ears, I kind of like slipped with the Q-tip and pushed it in a little further than I normally do. And it kind of bumped my eardrum and it hurt a sharp pain. And But the sharp pain went away and I think that might have disturbed my eardrum and stuff and my ear. And that's what kind of made it have an infection because I might have um, ruptured my eardrum and then caused it to have an ear infection so they have me taking this I don't know how to pronounce it it's off off loxian otic solution 0.3 percent and it's you put it in your ear and it is I've heard that well you always want to talk to your doctors but I've heard that this is eye drops as well um, but this, this specific, what they gave me, they wanted, it was, it can be used for eye drops, but they wanted me to obviously use it for my ear because I have an ear infection. So I had muffling of the ear too. Like my hearing's not that well in my right ear. It feels like somebody's covering my, um, my ear with my hand, with their hand, or like I'm plugging my ear with my finger. So that sucks really bad too. I don't have a fever, um, but you can have fevers with ear infections. So you want to watch out for all those signs. They also have me taking amoxicillin. Um, I'm supposed to take one, uh, one tablet by mouth twice a day for 10 days. So they wanted me... Okay, sorry. So they wanted me to take... Um, one tablet by mouth twice a day for 10 days. So I took one today, um, but I had to take another one tonight. And this stuff always makes my stomach and just, it makes myself and just myself in general feel like queasy and gross. And I know why, because with medicine, most medicines you should always eat. And I'm on a diet right now. And I'm trying not to, like, go over my calories or anything like that. So, I did eat some soup and a grilled cheese sandwich when I took the first pill. But, like, now I'm feeling kind of gross and stuff like that. So, I think that I'm going to um, eat again here soon. But it does say that you, sh you may take with food to lessen the chance of an upset stomach. And that it's important to finish all of the medication unless otherwise directed by doctor. So that's what my instructions say. But again, you always want to talk to your doctor about how they prescribe the medicine to you. So I guess my infection was so bad that they wanted me to do ear drops and an oral medication. Then she wanted me to go in to do a follow-up checkup to um, make sure that my ear infection went away. So I set that up with my primary care doctor and I have to go in and he'll just like peek in my eye with those little things they put into your ear. He's going to look into my 
my look with his eye into my ear and see that if the infection went away or not. And if it didn't, then it might require more medication or it might, might require some sort of surgery or something like that. But that's getting ahead of myself because I feel if it were to be that bad, I probably would be having pain. So I don't know yet. And then also, this wasn't fun either, but I found out I had a high blood pressure. It was 128 or something like that over 100. So that was pretty high, but I've had up and down high blood, blood pressures, um, but mostly like regular to medium high blood pressures. I haven't had a lot, a lot of high blood pressures. Um, but today my blood pressure was probably high like that because my kids were being terrible in the car on the way to going to the doctor today. And also not only that, but, um, I, I have to take thyroid medication because I'm a thyroid cancer survivor. And the dose that my oncologist had me taking was a little high. And so she had me uh, lower my dose 20 by 25 microbids. So um, I did stop taking the extra uh, thyroid medication. And I quit taking that because like I was feeling like very energetic. I wasn't able to sleep. Um, and my blood pressure was like, I was getting a lot, I wasn't having steady high blood pressure, like where you always have high blood pressure and it never comes down, but I was getting a couple high blood pressures here and there and that wasn't stopping. And so I let her, my oncologist know. And so they changed the, the dose on my medicine and ever since they changed the dose on my medicine, I've been having pretty regular um, blood pressures, um, except for the one today. But it kind of got under my skin that my doctor got on me about my high blood pressure and wanted me to talk to my primary care doctor because the fact that I already talked to my doctor about that ahead of time before she even said anything and the fact that my dad died of a heart attack and my brother-in-law just had a stroke like literally a month ago. So that was a really touchy subject. And I feel like sometimes like doctors and peop just people in general need to um, be more considerate and maybe think about the way they word things to people. Because I, um, you know, she, she, she said... Um, uh, she didn't really like say necessarily anything wrong, but here's what she said. She said, um, your blood pressure is really high. Um, uh, with your family history and everything like that, I really think you should talk to your primary care doctor. And the reason why that bothered me, you guys, is because my family history isn't just like some textbook. Um, that's my dad she's talking about. And and, um, you know, he passed away of a heart attack and everything. And so it's when doctors word things like that, I just feel like they're sometimes they're not thinking about how you have feelings. Like they just, they just literally think about making sure they take care of your health and then they don't give a shit about your mental health. Sometimes I feel like they're not putting in consideration that, oh, I, in her family history, it says her father died at a young age. So they should be, I feel, more empathetic and should be like, she could have worded it like this. Um, I, uh, oh, I see here that your father passed away at a young age from, you know, heart disease and a heart attack. I'm really sorry to see that. Um, we just want to be careful and make sure that you watch that. Um because that was, um, very young and, 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 uh, you know, early way to pass, early time to pass away. Uh, but we're very sorry about that. And just like be more compassionate in their wording, I guess. I don't know. I mean, I get that that's their job to just, you know, 
have us come in, tell them what's wrong, have us give us medicine and get us out. But, I mean, I don't know. At the same time, it's like they're working in the field of compassion, so they should, like, think about how they're to tell, talk to somebody. I mean, okay, for an example, when you, if someone has cancer, you don't just call them and say, hey, you know, we found out you had cancer, so... Um, you need to do this treatment and that treatment now. Uh, but, uh, yeah, um, uh, uh, keep me updated and just hang up the phone. I mean, there has to be some wording in the way they do things. Like, you know, hey, you know, we got your test results and I'm really sorry to say that we found out that you had cancer. And it, it will all be okay because we will get a plan going and get a uh, plan um we will put a plan together and get things going and we'll go from there and we'll take it day by day and I'm very sorry to tell you this news they can talk like that I just feel like there's different ways to talk to people and that like really triggered me today so I don't know I'm just sitting here with my the ear infection and just like, sitting here, like, being paranoid about my blood pressure and everything, and, um, just, I don't know. I, I've been not doing very good, you guys. I've been, like, mentally, I've been, like, really depressed and stuff, and, like, it's, it's just hard, because a lot of people are like, oh, you know, Ashley, you know, why are you having a hard time? Spring is here. Summer's gonna be coming. But for me, spring and summer are a hard time because that's like when a lot of the people that I really love and were close to passed away. And so I don't look forward to it and I don't like being hot. And I summer brings out a lot of people. It gets a lot of people out of their homes. And I don't really like being around a lot of people. So it it's a, it's a hard season for me. So... I, everyone's different, you know, so, but that's what's up right now, and, um, I will be on with another life topic.